That is the uh, could, could be full screen for the okay. and no need to, to show participants. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh -huh. yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, we can start. So I don't know. Uh, I could uh, speak there to our uh, virtual participants and uh, here to our virtual participants. Um, mainly it's PhD students so far. Uh, but um, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to announce some change in our uh, 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 program. Are you recording? Yeah. Okay. So the um, first um, on second of uh, May, we uh, should have a presentation from Marco Kurt about uh, history of mathematics and why you should know history of mathematics. In some sense, I cannot say unfortunately, but it's happened. And this is my fault that I did know that, that the 2nd of May is bank holiday in this country. <laughs> and uh, uh, we tried to do something, but finally uh, we decided to move a uh, 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 presentation by uh, talk by Mark Cooker to, uh, to autumn. Okay. So as it's now, we have already two speakers for autumn, one Mark Cooker and another uh, Sarah Waters, who also uh, confirmed that uh, she could uh, uh, speak in autumn, uh, Sarah from uh, Oxford. Mm -hmm. Then there are another change. Um, uh, we have two more uh, seminars, uh, one on 20, 23rd of May. It will be online. The speaker is from Kiev, so it's challenging. And uh, it's Professor Yamarchenko from School of, uh, not from School of the Institute of Mathematics, uh, uh, University in Kiev. And on 30, so the uh, next, uh, in one week after, uh, uh, on 30th of May, again at 2, it will be a uh, seminar uh, by uh, Professor, uh, his name is Sebekov. I know him for many years, but uh, uh, the last time, I don't remember, this could be 10 years ago. So he is from Institute of Hydromechanics. He's uh, famous for cavitation and uh, uh, high, so-called high-speed hydrodynamics. So it's not bio, it's something different, high-speed hydrodynamics, so that is the focus. So, uh, it's uh, turned to be kind of new for us uh, because we, uh, it was the, uh, our seminar should uh, uh, finish uh, uh, at the end of semester. So that is behind the uh, end of semester, 23rd and 30th. But still okay because the, uh, it's uh, still not uh, exam period. Okay. So that is the uh, all of us will be here, and uh, except of Mark, who is, uh, uh, will be on the travel. Uh, in May, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so the, now uh, um, I welcome uh, Yuri Simonov, who uh, is a uh, uh, speaker for today. He is from also Institute from uh, Hydromechanics, it's the same institute uh, as the for Sebrikov, uh, who will speak on 30th of May. And uh, uh, Yuri um, visited us and uh, gave seminar uh, in person. And also um, uh, one and a half years ago, he gave seminar about the motion under ice, uh, and it was already uh, online in pandemic. So, and uh, you work in many places, but originally he is from Kiev, and uh, uh, he uh, for more than ten years he uh, been in Russia, and. Uh, Almost all his papers there in Journal of Fluid Mechanics. So that is something. So he do not publish uh, 20, 20 papers per year, but 
mainly they are inflating. So that is a very particular uh, researcher. So, and the uh, uh, very interesting results, which attract uh, attention all around the world. And uh, today uh, he will speak about uh, his new results. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, it's published, could be not published and could be not submitted yet uh, to a journal. And uh, it's an uh, impact of body uh, submerging in open container. So, uh, Amir, it's uh, closest, to, closest to you, so please uh, watch carefully. So, um, you will please start your presentation. By the way, by the way, so we'll finish uh, around three, so we have uh, 55 minutes. After that, uh, I will be here for about, say, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I got kind of permission, but I need to go to another uh, meeting it's actually it's not meeting it's seminar uh, for in the faculty it's about uh, impact cases so i will present my impact and uh, Richard will present his own Richard will present his own impact. So he should be there but i can uh, go there a little bit later because uh, you can have uh, or, and other participants uh, you can have uh, uh, questions to you not only about science but uh, about uh, uh, life together and about the situation present situation about everything so uh, you can get information from different hands. So, Yuri, uh, please start your presentation. Uh, Sasha, thank you for your introduction. Yeah. Uh, thank you all of you for attending this seminar. I will talk about uh, analytical solution of impulsive impact of a cylindrical body submerged below a flat free surface, which is randomly set in motion. The shape of the cross-section of a body is arbitrary. It may be a flat plate, circle, polygon, etc. The shape of the container is also arbitrary. The results will be shown for the infinite uh, wide uh, channel and for the rectangular container. Uh, the concept of impulsive impact uh, goes back to work of Lagrange, in which he inter interpreted it the product of density times the velocity potential as um, pressure impulse and needed to suddenly impel a fluid from rest to its present velocity. It is uh, worth mentioning the paper of Joukowsky on the impact between two spheres, one of which is half submerged in a liquid. This work first dealt with uh, the added mass definition. Uh, the impulse pressure concept received very much uh, attention in uh, the works of Van Karman and Wagner studying the initial stage of violent water impact flows with an application to seaplane landing and ship slamming. Havelock studied the impulsively starting motion of a cylinder with a constant velocity and a constant acceleration. He applied a linearized boundary, free surface boundary condition and investigated, investigated the full time evolution of the free surface. The problem of water entry, water exit of a circular cylinder was studied theoretically and experimentally by Greenhow and Jan Bau. Hooker and Peregrine applied the impulsive concept to predict wave impacts on marine and coastal structure. Tivan and Milach studied an uh, unsteady nonlinear free surface flow using the method of small time mm -hmm. series expansion, mm -hmm. taking into consideration orders higher enough to account the leading um, gravitation effects, uh, to account leading gravitational effects on the free surface and uh, predict hydrodynamic uh, force acting on cylinder. Eafrati and Koropkin, Koropkin and Yilmaz studied uh, the impulsive vertical motion of a body initially floating on the flat free surface and uh, dump brick flows, respectively. Tivan and Milach uh, considered impulsive solution in the container and tank. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, mm -hmm. the model of impulsive impact uh, are based on the theory of uh, an incompressible and irrotational flow 
so that a velocity potential can be introduced. The free surface is assumed to be flat before the impact, and the potential of the free surface remains zero during the impact. The boundary value problem of the velocity potential can be written as uh, here. So we need also to account body boundary condition and far field condition. In contrast of the previous studies, we in this uh, talk we consider an impulsive motion of a body fully submerged in a liquid. The motivation of the um, study uh, comes from novel hydrodynamics of high speed hydrofoil crafts, whose foil system may experience sudden vertical impacts caused by waves hitting the main body of the craft. With a sketch of the physical domain is shown in the figure. The body uh, submerged below a calm free surface is symmetric about y-axis and uh, thus only a half of the flow region is considered. The shape of the body is defined by the slope of the body as function of the arc length coordinate S. Uh, the liquid is this humid, uh, ideal and incompressible. Uh, before the impact uh, liquid are at rest, then the body is suddenly set in motion with acceleration A directed downward, so that during infinitesimal time interval delta T, the speed of the body reaches the value U. Uh, we introduce uh, two system, uh, Cartesian system of coordinate. One is uh, x, y attached to the body, and uh, another x prime, y prime is attached to the bottom of the container. Uh, this uh, uh, two system mm, kinematically equivalent. So. Uh, the problem of a rigid body moving in a fluid body is kinematically equivalent to the problem of a fluid body moving around a fixed rigid body. So, uh, for uh, solving the so, so, for, to solve the problem, it is more convenient to use system uh, of coordinate x y uh, in which your body is fixed. So we know velocity direction along the body. It coincides with the slope of the body. And then uh, we, we uh, wrote in equation five, in the, you, we can write uh, relation between complex velocity in both these system coordinates. So in equation five, then integrating this uh, equation five, five we can find poten complex potential, relation between complex potential and these two systems. And differentiating six, uh, we obtain time derivative of the complex potential. Taking the real part of the complex potential uh, and substituting it in the Bernoulli equations and integrating uh, Bernoulli equation over infinitesimal time interval delta t tending to zero, we obtain impulse pressure. We see that the impulse pressure can be uh, expressed through the um, potential phi prime, or it can be ex expressed uh, in a system coordinate x, y, so the potential y, and additional term rho u y. Then we integrate the impulse pressure around the body to obtain vertical force. And finally, this vertical force can be uh, written through the added mass coefficient m prime o m. We can see these two added mass coefficients are related as shown in equation 10. And the uh, term shown by blue car is color is the bionicy force. Indeed, if we um, consider system coordinate attached to the body and the bottom of the container moves with acceleration, 
it's all the fluid move with the, with acceleration and, and situation is uh, like gravity appears then appears uh, bionicy force this is physical meaning of equation 10. Um, Conformal mapping, we, I repeat, we um, will uh, solve problem in the system of coordinate attached to the body at point A. Uh, we, uh, Joukowsky, and it is difficult to find a complex potential uh, as function of the physical plane, Kirchhoff method. Uh, Zhukovsky and Mitchell introduced a, a parameter plane. They introduced actually half plane and uh, proposed to find two independent functions. First is the complex velocity as function of the parameter variable. And second is complex uh, potential or derivative of co complex potential also as function of the parameter variable in the parameter plane. Then, uh, if these uh, functions are known, then the map, derivative of the mapping function uh, and the mapping function are obtained as combina combination of these two functions. Here is shown, uh, we shown how we choose the position of points um, A, B, C, D, E in the parameter plane. Uh, conformal mapping theorem allows us to choose three points orbit location of three points arbitrary. We choose points O at zero, E at infinity, and B at one. Then points A and C uh, should be determined. Position points of C and B, uh, A and C should be determined from the solution of the problem. Uh, so, um, we should formulate boundary value problem for complex velocity and for the derivative of the complex potential independently and uh, determine this independently. So, we need to say that um, <clears throat> here is shown uh, formulation of the problem. We first uh, uh, determine, analyze argument of the complex velocity. Uh, on the line OA, it is constant and equal pi over two, velocity directed uh, upward. And uh, along the body A, B, C, it is a function of the parameter variable psi. And we assume this function is known at this moment, but later it will be uh, determined. At uh, interval CD, again, it is pi over two constant. And along the bottom surface, um, function also change, is continuous changing because uh, uh, we only know here vertical component of the velocity, but we don't know the velocity itself. So, uh, but anyway, we can uh, uh, write this um, formula as argument of the complex function. At this stage, we also assume that magnitude of the velocity along the free surface, or E, is known. Then uh, we use integral formula 14, which is obtained using uh, Chaplin special point method and applicable um, to determine a complex function from its value of the velocity argument from its value of argument given on the real axis and um, its value of the magnitude given on the imaginary axis of the first quadrant. It is easy to check that this formula is uh, valid if we substitute zeta equal psi uh, or we obtain that argument equal to the function chi 
If we substitute uh, zeta equal eta, we obtain that magnitude of this function is just velocity v. So uh, substituting the boundary condition 12 and 13 into this formula 14 and evaluating first integral over step change at points A and C, we obtain the complex velocity. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that uh, in this uh, formula, we have two uh, jumps in function of the argument. At point A, velocity change by from uh, P over 2 to pi, opposite to the x direction. At point C, it's a change from 0 to pi over 2. So at point A and C, we have jumps pi over 2. Then substituting these jumps into the first integral, we obtain these terms, which appears due to this jump. It, is, uh, it can be seen that at points A and point C, uh, velocity equal to 0. Yes, that corresponds to the velocity at the corner point. Then it, uh, this expression contains uh, parameter AC and function eta uh, on xi, which should be determined later in the flow. Now we um, will uh, search uh, function derivative of the complex potential. And we, it is uh, convenient to introduce um, velocity, normal ve unit velocity vector tau and n, normal and tangential vector tau and n. Uh, then um, uh, dv ds is equal, we will be equal uh, tangential component of velocity and normal component of velocity. So, and we using this uh, expression, we can introduce angle theta, angle between velocity vector and uh, boundary, uh, flow boundary, or bottom of the container. Uh, the second we uh, can write uh, derivative of the complex potential is product of the dp ds and the s dx uh, zeta. Take the argument of this function. It will be equal to the sum of argument. Argument of product equal to the sum of arguments. Arguments of ds the zeta equal zero along the real axis because both uh, variables are real. And along imaginary axis, it's equal i, and s is negative such that uh, this uh, argument equal pi over 2. So we found, we, we found the relation between argument of this complex velocity and velocity vector angle theta, which depends, uh, determined by normal and tangential component of velocity. Finally, we can write of argument of the uh, derivative of the complex potential along the wall boundary of the complex first quadrant. It equal pi uh, from zero to point D. When the everything is fixed, there is no normal velocity equal to zero. So we have uh, the argument pi. Then argument uh, on the bottom of the cylinder of the container at this moment we don't know it just function continues and again on the uh, mm -hmm. free surface uh, uh, also uh, argument of the complex velocity mm -hmm. equal actually this pi over two but plus this pi over two we obtain pi and then Substitute this formula into substituting this boundary condition into this formula, we can obtain an evaluating um, jump of functions var theta at point D, we obtain the expression for the complex velocity. So this integral formula, uh, which determines a complex function from value of its argument uh, given on the both real and imaginary axis. This uh, integral formula was obtained using uh, Chaplin's special point method.
So uh, constant KD and function have to be determined. If uh, mm -hmm. we consider infinite depth container, then parameter D tends to infinity and the ratio KD tends to the uh, another constant. So derivative complex potential becomes very simple, just a constant. And now with using combination of the derivative of complex potential or complex velocity, we can determine derivative of the mapping function. And integrating, we obtain mapping function itself. This expression uh, contains four unknown parameter A, C, D, K, and three unknown function beta uh, xi, on xi on the um, real axis corresponding to body and the bottom of the container, and function uh, magnitude of the velocity on the free surface. And this is angle between velocity and the um, bottom of the container. To determine this function, we need to consider boundary conditions and uh, uh, other physical considerations. Because parameter, unknown parameter A, C, D, K is obtained from this uh, quite uh, simple equation. So length of the between point O and A, length between point O and B, it will is B so on O point this all these um, lengths are known, given, so we can easily uh, find these uh, four parameters if functions are known. Now we need to write equation to determine function beta xi on interval AC corresponding to the body, submerged body. We can write easily um, this uh, formula. Here d beta, the S, is a physical uh, shape of given the physical shape of the body and function uh, derivative of the um, arc length coordinate for function n is obtained using a derivative of the mapping function it equal magnitude of the derivative of the mapping function where zeta equal xi to uh, means uh, real axis so we can see that uh, this expression con also contains d beta dx i. So this is an um, integrated differential equation. And it easily can be solved using the method of successive approximation. A second, we need to determine velocity magnitude on the free surface. What we know, uh, it can be done from kinematic boundary condition on the free surface. Uh, free surface is flat. Uh, and uh, the pressure is equal to constant atmospheric pressure. It means that due to the impact uh, of the body, velocity is directed, directed perpendicular to the free surface. That state this equation. Then we know the velocity, complex velocity, taking the expression at the along imaginary axis, zeta equal to eta. We obtain this uh, integral equation. Here, uh, velocity, and we move all the other terms into the right-hand side and, and obtain this integral uh, equation of the first, goal integral equation of the first kind with logarithmic kernel. The right-hand side is function. Uh, we uh, replace integral by sum to, to have uh, in the right hand uh, side only function arctangent. Arctangent nu a, arctangent nu c, arctangent eta over xi with some coefficient. It's, we can see that it's very <clears throat> nice because we <clears throat> this um, right hand side very simple. And we can solve this uh, expression, uh, equation, integral equation, analytically using the following uh, transformation, which can be found in the book Palanin and Manjira. Finally, <clears throat> we obtain this expression. And now this uh, product, uh, we can uh, replace by exponent and sum. And again, uh, 
for the in case of limit n tends to infinity, we obtain here integral. So this is expression for the velocity uh, magnitude on the free surface. In case of the flat, um, formula became simpler because velocity uh, slope can be written easily. It's minus pi along AB. It's zero along CB. So substituting this uh, formula into this integral 28, we obtain this. And we obtain this uh, <clears throat> formula. So we obtain new term here. And if uh, we work with infinite depth fluid, then parameter there D go to infinity and this term disappears at all. So what we need to determine um, more is the uh, is the function uh, velocity direction beta on the bottom of the container. Uh, we, uh, as I told, uh, it's suddenly set in motion with velocity u, u vert in vertical direction. So fluid uh, um, velocity, vertical component of the fluid also equal u. So we, take magnitude of the velocity for that equals that and taking the vertical component sinus beta and it should be equal u or unit uh, using a non-dimensional uh, code system uh, parameters. So again, we can extract uh, from this uh, expression, we can write in this form. And we, what is, this is unknown function beta on between D and infinity. All here is known. However, this is too complicated right hand side and this equation will be solved numerically. The last equation, we, the last uh, unknown we have to determine is velocity at point E. In case of infinite wide channel, uh, it's equal to unit because this is far field condition. In case of the container, um, it's a little bit more complicated. So we flow rate due to the motion of the bottom should be equal flow rate on the free surface. Uh, the first uh, flow rate on the bottom is Xe, Xe coordinate projection on X. Multiplied at velocity, which is unit. And also on the free surface uh, flow rate between points O and E equal to the uh, difference in stream function at uh, eta equals zero and eta equal infinity. So between O and E. So we obtain this um, equation to determine velocity V at point E. So now <clears throat> I will talk about <clears throat> method of solution of this uh, system of integral nonlinear equation. First, we solve the nonlinear, for nonlinear equation as, as shown here. This is, uh, I talk about, this is length between point A and B, B and C, C and D and so on. Then we need to, we will solve the, um, using a um, method of successive approximation equations 23. Substitute the values, obtained values uh, into the expression of the derivative of the arc length coordinate. And then solve numerically this equation. And finally, substitute values of unknown function and parameter into the velocity expression velocity for the velocity magnitude. So uh, everything can be determined. So <clears throat> this is a method. Initial guess is given as shown here. Solve the system equation, uh, nonlinear equation, then solve the integral differential equation 23 using internal iteration when it is solved, it will go down, determine function v, 
determine function beta c at the bottom of the container. Then uh, set new approximation using a re uh, under relaxation factor. Uh, it's necessary to, 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 to give convergence of the method. And finally, iterating this uh, equation, we obtain solution numerical. Here shown how equation 23 converge, converges um, using two relaxation factor 0.25 and 0.5. Of course, uh, as higher relaxation factor, faster convergence. <coughs> Here, uh, numerical results. First, I uh, talk about results for without container, so just body in a unbounded liquid. So we can see for the plate, uh, if a plate approaches free surface, uh, added mass coefficient, tends to pi over two, that correspond to the Karman solution, one Karman solution. And if the depth of submerges increases, then we arrive to the added mass pi, that correspond to the flat plate in the unbounded fluid domain without free surface. Uh, for, this is uh, for the case of circle added mass coefficient, uh, it's also equal pi for the unbounded fluid. And here um, we count H from the fully submergence. And so circle is fully submerged. So this is some initial value. And square, for the case of the square also results correspond to the, from some value at small depths of submergence to the maximum value corresponding to unbounded fluid domain. Here shown uh, velocity distribution on the free surface for different depths of a submersion of flat plane. Uh, uh, it, ne it need to say that uh, we consider it a case when the plate moves down suddenly. Also, we, if we consider a case when plate moves upward suddenly, we obtain identical boundary value problem on the velocity, the complex velocity will have one constant the determining the velocity on the free surface opposite. It, instead of pi, minus pi over two will be a plus pi over two. So, um, and uh, this is all same, same velocity distribution, but with different direction of the velocities or the different direction of the impact. Uh, here, <clears throat> the results are shown for the case of um, infinite wide container or for the channel, finite depths. Here shown um, streamlines and velocity distribution on the free surface in the system coordinate attached to the container to the bottom. On the right hand side is shown the same flow but in the system coordinate attached to the plate. So the uh, the channel the, the bottom of the channel suddenly start to move up and this uh, streamline configuration and velocity here velocity about zero because it's uh, captured by the plate. Plate is fixed and liquid, uh, not so high speed have. Um, so, but at the end of the age, uh, velocity becomes higher than unit. Here, the same results are shown uh, when the plate is uh, submergence, for another submergence of the plate, uh, uh, L. L is the half length of the plate. Uh, uh, and the uh, added mass is shown here with almost pi, almost pi here, added mass uh, 2.134, and here is almost pi. That means that free surface and uh, bottom makes weak, weak effect on the flow around the plate. 
Here very um, closely to the uh, channel depths, and we see that uh, added mass increases. The same results uh, are shown for the circular cylinder for different depths of submergence. And added mass now, in this case, added mass coefficients are the same in both system of coordinates because cross-sectional area of the plate is zero. In case of the uh, circular cylinder, it is not zero. And bionic, because there is bionic force, uh, we need to show which system of coordinate um, the results are shown, in which system of coordinate results are presented. So this is M prime correspond to the system attached to the bottom. Also, it can see that uh, added mass coefficient increases. Here are shown table with the for the plate, circle, and square, and different depths of submergence shown here. And here D is distance um, between the uh, bottom and the low part of the body, uh, circle, circle or square. That means that um, because these um, parameter values are the same, it means that channel for the uh, circular and circle and for the square is uh, larger by two, 10 and uh, for the circle and square depth of the channel equal 12 then these distances remains the same. Here shown results uh, for the container, mm, uh, streamlined patterns for the different depths of submergence and determined um, added mass coefficient, actually prime, should be prime, sorry. Uh, this is same results for the circular cylinder in the container, sudden in motion in the container. And mass coefficient depends not only on the depths, but it also depends on the wide of the channel. And here shown added mass coefficient uh, for the plate, uh, depth of submergence H of zero or Point two, and different wide of the channel. Uh, side wall of channel, or side wall of container, um, confine the liquid uh, in motion. Then uh, added mass increases. This is for the plate different uh, submergence line, and this line for the circle circle in the container, uh, yeah, yeah, for different. And so again, to compare results for the plate and circle, we use different uh, container, different uh, depths of container, H5 for the plate and seven for the circle. So on the added mass coefficient and velocity distribution along the free surface have been determined for various shapes of the body and container, various depths of submersion and vice of the container have been investigated. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Yuri. Um, any questions for me? Uh, any question from? Uh, online participants. If there is a hand or no, yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nobody there. Okay. Then <laughs> I can ask. I, I have a question. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, good. Good. Can you hear me, Yuri? Yeah, I hear. I hear Mark. A, a, a quick question. You mentioned at the end that the side walls increase the added mass. Is that something that you can quantify in a general way? Um, 
so when a side wall uh, confined the mm, possibility to <laughs> liquid uh, move in uh, sides so it's like um, became cine only thin channel uh, on for the flow motion and it uh, caused the increase uh, of the added mass coefficient sorry maybe uh, your question a little could you please repeat your question <laughs> i'll try again now yes yeah. so, suppose you know the added mass for a body with yeah. the side walls far away suppose yeah. you have a result already yeah can you make an estimate or a model for uh, when these side walls are brought in to some finite distance or even very close is there some way to model that in general yes of course uh, the added mass uh, is uh, less than wide of the containers larger and it increases when the um, container became thinner. Yeah, it increases, added mass increases. It was shown in the table, but uh, also so. Yes, I think it's clear from your results that you, you have a strong effect. Yes. Strong it can be, uh, quantified or made into something that's a theory that depends upon the the width of the of the uh, tank. Mm -hmm. It looks very interesting what you have there. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, this, can you see my this uh, slide? Can you see? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the here shown uh, this is wide of the channel, and uh, it decreases for different wide. And here 1.5, here 10. And we can see how added mass increases for the plate and for the circle. Thank you. It's good to see those results. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it could be about uh, different for different shapes, definitely. And uh, potentially uh, you can kind of plot the uh, added mass and the walls approach with the day. Yes. Um, okay. uh, I, um, uh, I have a question that uh, I believe I asked you already. But, uh, could you please explain uh, this point in more detail? So, uh, potentially, uh, to solve this problem, uh, we can start with the uh, gains identity and uh, to write boundary um, uh, integral equation. And uh, the equation is the yeah, Feynman equation, uh, uh, second kind. So the looks like uh, we can solve it, and there are no singularity in that equation. Uh, we can do this almost for any shapes, in particular for smooth shapes. Definitely, we can do this. So, what the uh, could you please uh, explain the advantage of uh, uh, your uh, uh, technique? compared with the kind of uh, more uh, direct uh, approach. I, I, one moment, I, uh, I go back to <clears throat> this slide. So uh, um, approach, uh, my approach is based on this uh, integral formula. We can uh, in using, considering any problem, we can easily um, formulate boundary value problem for the complex, for the velocity direction. Analyzing the um, figure of schematic of the flow, we can easily um, write uh, equation for the velocity direction and analyze uh, where the, there is a jumps in the velocity direction. And this formula is just, uh, we assume that we know velocity. It's just assumption. So we can easily uh, write equation boundary value problem for the complex velocity in terms of the velocity argument and velocity magnitude on the free surface. And so the, and then this is universal formula for or any uh, for any complex uh, function. And mm -hmm. we use this uh, integral formula 
just uh, substituting the boundary conditions and immediately obtain the expression for the complex velocity. So the boundary value problem of the fluid uh, flow is uh, reduced to the system of uh, nonlinear equation and integral equation to determine some um, unknown function. This is a uh, core of the method uh, I use for solving free boundary problem. Is it Russia, is it uh, the answer to your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, one more question. Uh, could you show, I believe it's previous slides, where you introduce the jump uh, at the point. Yeah, 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 that's, that one. So delta A and delta C, and uh, you said this pi over 2. Yeah, it was pi over 2. This means that... Uh, the uh, tangent to the body shape at point A and C, they are horizontal. Yeah. But it's not necessary, right? So the, your uh, body could be of different shape. Yeah, it, in, that, in that case, it will be different uh, the jumps. But it's not so much uh, the approach, it could be the same, right? The, the rest is... For the example, same. here maybe triangle, A yeah. C triangle, and angle... Yeah. At point C will be uh, 100, uh, not one, 120 degree, or some uh, more than 90 degree, more right. than P or over two. Then uh, here also jump will be more than P over two, and if uh, this jump uh, here will be different uh, order of this uh, power. Okay, okay, okay. So angle at point C affect the order of power of yes. these stems. Okay. So in, this is for uh, smooth shapes. In case of smooth shape, if body smoothly without angle, without corners, smoothly uh, change, then we have no any jumps, and we obtain yeah. this equation. So. Just this uh, 14 will be <laughs> complex velocity. Okay, yeah. yeah. Expression uh, 14 will be complex velocity because there is no any jumps. Okay, yeah, okay. So that if it's a, a not one over two, it's another power, uh, then it yeah. can, be, uh, can be done. Right? So the... Yeah, power depends on the angle at point C yeah. and A. Yeah. Okay. Jump. Okay. So final question. Uh, um, I I noticed that uh, you um, in the previous slide uh, you uh, uh, no, what, one more uh, back back uh, uh, to the beginning. Could you show? Yes, stop here. No, stop here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, equation eight is uh, your uh, nonlinear Bernoulli equation. Right. This is a uh, impulse pressure. Equation nine is impulse pressure uh, because we'll, in, if you uh, see equation eight, equation eight here velocity uh, square magnitude velocity yes square uh, and uh, velocity in our case is finite everywhere uh, on all free surface because body submerged yes and does in the velocity of the free surface is finite. Uh, it's different situation from the flat plate on the free surface. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, velocity infinite um, at the contact uh, free surface and body, but we have no content free surface and body. Body fully submerged. Therefore, velocity is finite, and we integrate this uh, over time interval, infinitesimal time interval, and times with velocity disappears. Is equal to zero, becomes equal to zero, okay. and and only phi, only we have phi, that's all. Okay, okay. So actually, uh, it seems that the firm equation ten that you use the uh, linearized Bernoulli equation without quadratic term. But <laughs> no, no I, I I did not linearize because I I, I just integrated. Uh, Bernoulli equation eight over time interval delta t tending to zero. That's all. Okay. 
no, in, in, uh, okay, uh, just uh, to, to make it be clear my uh, equation. In equation 10, there is the first integral is about dynamic pressure, right? And uh, first integral, yes. And the second, it's, uh, 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 it's about the mo okay, it's about the motion. It is about the um, bionacy force. You can see this term is uh, because bionacy force. Mm. Buoyancy force. Okay. 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 I, I understand now. Okay, so then, uh, the, uh, any other questions from our participants, from online participants? You have chance to ask questions. So the. You can type questions or uh, you can, yeah, the, uh, 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 Peter, 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 please. Thank you, thank you, very nice talk. Can I just ask about the results on slide 23? So it looks like the, the, the scaling of the free surface and the body position on that axis is slightly different. So it looks like that the body comes out comes out of the water at, at that point. That's just a scaling issue on, on the on the two axes. Is that correct? We, I should explain. This is a velocity correspond to the left uh, axis, okay. and position correspond to the right axis. Okay. So, so, the, so the next bit of the question: Can that free surface come down and rupture over the top of that over the top of the body? <laughs> Sorry, I know. So if the free surface moves down over yeah. the top of the body, can you get a dry rupture in, on top of the body? Sorry. Um, uh, is it possible that uh, the free surface goes down to the body surface and uh, uh, intersect it? Is, is it possible the contact? Between no, no, it, it cannot intersect. You can see that red correspond to the position point 0.25, and we can see that in this case, oh, sorry, the, the yeah, in this case, uh, velocity a little bit uh, higher than velocity of the plate. Velocity plate is minus one, and velocity of the liquid is also a little bit higher than minus one. So velocity, of course, no. Uh, free surface cannot cross the body for any case. At least at initial, we consider, we consider uh, in initial uh, moment. At this moment, uh, uh, liquid uh, free surface remains the same place. It does not move. Only velocity uh, distribution is not uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. But it's for the next time. It will. It just to show what happens in the next time moment of time. Thank so, you, yeah. Peter. The velocity is of order one, but then you multiply it by small delta t. And yeah. you've got a negligible displacement. Okay. Yeah, so okay. the for impact problem, it's, uh, yeah, that is what's happening there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, uh, and uh, from participants, okay. So, um, yeah, so then should we close the seminar or uh, uh, participants want to talk to uh, UA or uh, UA, want you say something at the end? Uh, yeah, I would uh, thank you for all <laughs> participants for their attention and for interesting question. Uh, what's, uh, the, uh -huh. what's the what, what, sorry? What's the situation now in your place? Is it uh, uh, are you are you still in your flat or where are you are now? Uh, Sasha, did you stop the recording? Uh -huh, stop recording. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.